So I'm sure there are a number of fathers watching our live stream today and they will all remember with great fear and trepidation the first evening or night that a son or a daughter asked to borrow the car. I'm just going to meet a few friends, Dad. Can I borrow the car? I got my test. I have my provisional license. Well, no, I have my full license. I just need to borrow the car. What do you think, Dad? And he invariably said, ask your mother. <laughs> or, or maybe, with a slight tremble in his hand, handed over the keys and said, take care of her. I know how much diesel is in her. No more than 100 kilometers or back by 2 o'clock or whatever stipulation was put in place, you know. And I remember asking my own dad that particular question. Dad, can I borrow the car? Because I was going to, we lived close enough to town, so it was handy just to nip in, go out uh, with, with the lads and, uh, and come back home rather than waiting for hours and hours and hours trying to get taxis at 4 o'clock in the morning in Thurles. So I remember asking, uh, could I have the car? And dad said, OK, take it handy. No bother. Grant. And there was a, an unfortunate incident uh, couple of nights, a couple of months, I don't know when it was, I, I, I was going out with a girl in, in, in Mitch Sound, so I had to go for, I to drive from Thurles to Mitch Sound, it's about 50 minutes, and on the way home, leaving Mitch Sound, I realised I had very little fuel, so the fuel light came on, now I had no idea how far you can go with the fuel light on, is it 10 kilometres, 100 kilometres, I have no idea, and it was 3 o'clock in the morning, so um, most of the petrol stations were closed, but I knew there was one twenty-four hour station at the far side of Cashel, so I, had just, I just had to make it as far as Cashel. Now, this is before the days of the motorway, so you had to actually drive through the town anyway. So, for those of you who'll remember, those of you who are kind of locals around here, uh, coming from Cork down into Cashel, there's a long, steep decline. Uh, and at the end of it, there's a right angle bend. That brings you into the, the, right into the centre of town. So I thought, look, if I freewheel down, I'll save a bit of, save a bit of petrol. It's a 1.6 petrol. I'll save a bit of petrol. It'll get me to the far side of town. So no bother. So I put her into, into neutral and rolled the whole way down. And that was grand. I thought, well, actually, if I can preserve enough speed going around the bend, again, it'll, that's, that's going to help me even more, isn't it? I won't even need to, even need to accelerate. I'll definitely make it to the petrol station. Because, as I said, the fuel light had been on for 20 minutes at this, at this stage. So, anyway, lo and behold, I took the bend a little faster than grip was able to manage. So I skidded forward, and I hit a one-foot wall and blew my tyre and knocked the wheel back about six inches. So, anyway, that was not so good. Long story short, got the car off the wall, replaced the tyre, drove home, went into Dad's Dad, yeah, uh, had a little accident. <laughs> he said, did anyone get hurt? I said, no. He said, okay, we'll look at it in the morning, so. Okay, now, sorry for the, for the long story. Anyway, just, I wanted to show that experience that parents have of having to let their kids go, even though they know there's a risk, there's a danger. Okay, and in, in giving their kids freedom, there's always a risk or danger they'll get hurt. Now this happens with anything. Dad, can I play hurling? Can I go onto a field with 29 lads swinging sticks? Sure. <laughs> like there's always a danger, right? There's, there's always a, 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 a danger in, in, in using our freedom. Okay, God gives the people of Israel freedom. And with that freedom, they chose to put idols into the temple. They chose to serve other gods. They chose to actually be identical to every other nation rather than be a people set apart for God's own glory. They got freedom, they misused it. The misuse of that led to the exile, is what we read yesterday. And today's reading then is uh, the people in exile, in Babylon, lamenting. It's from the book of Lamentations. You know, they're, they're, they, they miss what, what Zion, Jerusalem, was like. They miss that freedom. But they had the freedom and they blew it. And now their experience, this experience of being in exile, actually, it starts to, it starts to teach them that there are, actually, there are consequences to the way we act. There are consequences to following God or not following God. Uh, this isn't God punishing his people, but in a way, it's, it's the people learning through the circumstances that God has permitted. It's not that God's anger, as we said yesterday. It's not that God, God's anger blazes against them, and once he sees that they've suffered enough, then he lets them go home. It's not to do with, nothing to do with suffering. Everything to do with love. But often we love through suffering. And we love, we, we can come to, to realize our need for God, unfortunately, through the cross. I think if, it, if there was another way, God would do it another way. But very often, when we're blessed with affluence and blessed with everything like we have in, the, in, 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 our, 
in our world today, for, for most of us anyway, thank God, it's very easy to forget God because we don't experience our need for him. Okay, I was ordained 11 years ago today. It's my anniversary at an ordination. And what I was thinking about today when we were just praying our rosary before Mass is that like, the essence of, of priesthood or what's so important for priesthood today and maybe what led to problems in the priesthood in the past. There are lots of things, but just today I'd like to speak about one. Is that a priest is called to be a father. A priest is called to be a father. And if a priest loves and lives as a father, I think he'll be a good priest. There's a, the seminary actually where a friend of mine, Father Shane Sullivan, uh, he went to in the States... Minnesota. In Minnesota, there was a, a formator there. His name was Father Bear. I've never met the man, never read anything from him, but this, this story was, was accounted to me by Father Shane. And he said that this formator there in the seminary, he used to say that when seminarians would come to him, his job as a formator in the seminary wasn't so much to form priests, but to form fathers. He said, like, there'll be a certain percentage of, of the seminarians who will drop out, but my job is to form them to be good fathers. And if they're good fathers and they leave the seminary, they'll be good husbands, they'll be good, good dads. If they stay in the seminary, see out their time, become priests, they'll be good priests because they're good fathers. The heart of God is a fatherly heart. And in, in, in this, this, this loving heart, he gives us freedom. Freedom can, can, can backfire. Freedom can mean that we go the wrong direction. And so what's a father supposed to do? A father's supposed to provide for his children. He's supposed to protect his children. He's supposed to teach them. And so this is part of, of, of priestly ministry. Uh, even the, the, the reading, it says so, so beautifully, um, the visions of your prophets, now obviously by, by this they mean false prophets, the visions of your prophets that they had on your behalf, they were delusive, tinsel things. The prophets, so the, the false prophets in Israel at the time, they told you what you wanted to hear. You're all great, we're all going to heaven, it's all fine, plant a few trees and you're good before God. Recycle, be a good person. Right? The visions your prophets had on your behalf were delusive, tinsel things. They never pointed out your sin to ward off your exile, so the exile could have been prevented. Right? If, if the prophets, or the priests at the time, if they'd led, if they'd been fathers, if they had done what was difficult, if they'd done the hard things. So, I think in, in, in order to experience like a renewal in the priesthood, in order to see renewal in the priesthood, I think a rediscovery of the fatherhood of priesthood would go an awful long way. That when priests then see their people suffer, when they see their people in need, when they see their people leave, that they love them as a father, that they pursue them as a father, that they teach them as a father, that they pray for them as a father, that they provide for them as a father. And so the priest of being a good priest isn't about being an amazing preacher. It's not about having wonderfully, wonderful organizational gifts and being a very good administrator of, of the parish accounts. Who cares unless we're guiding souls to God? Unless we're being fathers for our people, what does the rest of it matter? No point having an incredibly affluent parish with no souls that love God there. This, like, again, we're, we're, we can learn so much from our readings and learn so much from the, uh, the, the, the prophets, what we've heard recently in, in, in the readings, how the people were so blessed in Jerusalem, and despite that, they turned against God. They put other gods in his place, turned to idolatry, and lost it all. So in order to be good priests, in order to renew the priesthood, we re renew our understanding of fatherhood, I think we'll see a renewal of the priesthood. We're called to be good fathers to provide, protect, suffer for our people. And if we do that, and if we've ex ever experienced good fatherhood in our own lives, or being fathered by another man who wasn't necessarily our dad, but maybe there was some man in our lives who, really, who showed us how to be a man, showed us how to be a father. All of these people, they've shown us a spark of the heart of God. And I think in a, in a way they've shown us a heart of what it means to be a true priest. So Lord, we pray for our priests, we pray for a renewal of the priesthood. We pray for a renewal of their fatherhood, a renewal of their love for their people, that they will father people in the faith who in turn will father others. Amen. <laughs>